So. It's got a really strong herbaceous quality to it. It tastes like it's, there's yeah. a leaf of tarragon mixed in there. Huh. Right? I haven't had tarragon. Tiny for bit a while. of stringent. Yeah. Um, hmm. There's the choke, choke berry as well. And that's kind of in the same group. I kind of feel like it's like acai. Light fruit. Mm. Yeah. It's like an yeah. acai berry mm -hmm. in the north. Yeah. So you kind of got to appreciate it for that. Absolutely. And some of them taste better than others. I've got some gooseberries back here too. Um, and have you lived here long enough to get that moment when when you're sleeping in the teepee and you're like, man, I'm really hungry for this particular thing. You know, your, your appetite starts to tell you what medicine to take, what to yeah. eat. I would say with apples, I mean, it kind of depends. It's still kind of a young system, so I'll have apples and plums. My ch my um, tree cherries are just start started to come in, but otherwise it's mostly been berries mm -hmm. and and greens. But because it's such a wild spot, a lot of my greens would get nibbled until I fence them in, and now um, now it's just finally it's coming in. So it's mostly just been the berries though. So I'll walk around. As far as in, like instinctively wanting to eat stuff, it's just me walking around and kind of pulling, you know, pulling some grasses and checking stuff out, and then yeah, Tending. and then just eating these guys, mm -hmm. you know, because they are around. I mean, the idea of actually going through here and picking picking is a little intimidating. Now it is, yeah. It's all the way back here. I feel like this is just the bird. But you've got food. you've got a tremendous amount of wealth here, and if you needed to tuck. If you needed to fold it down, cover it with wood chips, and make yourself a keyhole, you could do that. Oh yeah, instantaneously. I mean, you, the wealth oh, yeah. is here. Yeah, yeah. And I think another reason too why this got so big was that it's getting all the moisture coming right off the greenhouse, mm -hmm. so it, it it absorbs. And there's a bunch of logs buried at the base of that. And it, you, if you're not here that much of the year, you know, you have <clears throat> there's a lot of time. You have to just let it do what it's going to do once yes. it's established. I felt like I had to design this for neglect for sure. <laughs> um, this comfrey right here was completely, when I, two days ago, all the branches were just the same. They were all completely over on this side. So I cut all these branches off, and then this is come back. Just in a couple days? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it was a little bit, I mean, mm -hmm. a little bit like this. This is a mulberry mm -hmm. that I planted a little while ago. It's, it leaves are a little yellow. We'll see, that's a really rich uh, soil that I planted it in, but we'll see. There's some more gooseberries back here. They look a little more stringy. Gooseberries are aren't not the most beautiful plant. <laughs> That's say. true. I have to say they're not. Um, take off for the poison ivy. Mm -hmm. uh, my first year of elderberry flowers, which I'm extremely happy about. Um, I don't think there's anybody else in this county growing elderberries. I, I just don't see it at all. Right. It's such a crazy thing. Why wouldn't you? I know. I know. So you get the flowers and. Um, the flowers haven't opened yet, so I don't get that little bit, but I think oh. it's going to happen really soon. And there's some over here. So I've got like, I've got something like maybe 10 elderberries around and maybe a little more, but maybe three that are flowering. So I'm super happy about that. Um, yeah, now that I've got these wood chips, I'm just, oh, it's so good. Just being able to have this cleanliness. And now I just kind of got to keep, keep on my, on it, you know, stuff like this. Where I just kind of go in and and just keep it not looking so nasty. This is a Korean nut pine. Oh yeah. And her sister is right. So down here's some here. ants raising aphids here. Yep, yep. They're crazy. They're crazy. So I covered uh, this Korean nut pine. I circled it with a lot of uh, pine mulch, like spruce mulch that uh -huh. I got from nearby. And I put some comfrey in there, and this is the first year where I'm really seeing some explosive, psh, really mm -hmm. nice growth. I bought that from One One Green World in Oregon. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, they're great. They're great. And um, the first year I had it, it was in Los Angeles for maybe four months, and it was growing. Like, uh, there's a lot of new growth. And then I brought it here, and it's taken about two years to readjust. But now I think it's it's set and it's happy and um, it's off and running. So maybe like in another five years, we'll have to like seriously walk around that thing. Right. Yeah. And then here's the sister, which is doing, in my opinion, even better. Yeah. <clears throat> I fenced it off. Yeah. Really green chips, really yeah. deep along the stem. Uh, I used to collect pine pollen. I was collecting pine pollen uh, just a couple, maybe a month ago. And so I put all the casings around it. Those are the little catkins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, this is a buffalo berry. Oh, you do have buffalo berry. Cool. Yeah. Have yeah. you tasted it? No, have I don't you gotten think any? there's any leaves, any flowers yet. On okay. Anything. Yeah. Um, I have yet to get um, buffalo berry or elderberry. I haven't tasted or planted oh, yeah. a few trees. And it's it'll come. It'll come. It'll come. This is kind of like my raspberry slope too. 
Mm -hmm. the, um, <clears throat> I could, I don't know, you know, I was, yeah, I just gonna, the original idea is that uh, on the other side of this mound here, there's a pathway that goes back up through those high bush cranberries. Ooh. Yeah, my, um, my hands are all dirty, but uh, mm -hmm. those are good. Yeah. And I, I don't water these. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the flavor is really nice. Well, even in this little mm. valley here between uh, what looks like, you know, that looks like about a 40% canopy. You've got some dying birch and dying poplar. That's opening up. you got that new open spot over there. And there's yep. a gentle slope towards this little valley. This little valley is very moist. Yes. And there's yes. a lot of cold air moving through. Yeah. Even though, you know, it's 100 degrees over there by the road, 200 feet away. Uh-huh. You know, so. It's a completely different climate. It's a totally different microclimate. And it's really, yeah, that this pathway down in here, it's always wet. Mm -hmm. Like it's really wet, low soil. And I've tried to grow apple trees there. No way. Mm -hmm. No way. So mm -hmm. that would be a good spot for elderberries. Right. And plus, I mean, there might be competition from that big oak tree, but it's mostly just very wet, um, clay soil. Hmm. So, okay, I'll go around you. Actually, one a cool thing we can do, and there's, I don't think there's any PI right here. We just have to, ah, oh, it's too bad. Cause sometimes I don't want to pull these plants, you know, but they're right in the pathway. Milkweed? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, but, you know. I don't want to be that guy always having to pull plants around there. It does make a big difference. Um, chop and drop right there. Yeah, you just end up getting so much. <clears throat> so this was kind of an original idea, just walking up through this. Thing. And this is, these are two high bush cranberries that I bought at Walmart back in 2009. They were on sale for, I think, like $10 each. And they were so small, and now they're just huge. And so it's kind of like this natural arbor. And before I left for Hawaii, I had this all trimmed up, and now I've got to trim it again. The growth, it's something like uh, two feet, two feet of new growth every year. Pretty intense. Yeah. One of my favorite apples Fun so far. place, place. This is the Whitney crab apple. Okay. And it's really like, really did nice. Um, this is one of the swales that I had them build right down in here. And I've got like some pears. I got two honey crisps, some more pears, Whitney crab apples, June berries. And then I got some Siberian pea, sh um, sorry, sea buckthorn. Mm -hmm. And I just want to try and plug in as much sea buckthorn along the ridge there. And just to take them up because I got a lot of extras right now. And just kind of more raspberries. I think one one season I would like to do a row of uh, Jerusalem artichokes, sunchokes across the back. But the raspberries have just really taken over. So now, oh wow. Mm. It's nice to be here in July finally when um, everything's ripening. Usually I'm not here in July. So my mom and I have to hear about them picking and getting bit by mosquitoes all day. It's amazing how powerful naturalized, you know, species that belong here, how quickly they thrive. And yeah. We inherited a garden with a raspberry patch um, with mints and a few climbers. Okay. And uh, whatever else we do in the garden, you know, I plant, I try some things, I put this next to this and it struggles and it kind of works and it kind of works and the raspberries just go, yep. and they're just kind of, you know, an yep. example. 